look, I wanted to talk about the telco sector. Um, we just had a couple of data points in the last week that I thought justified doing a bit of a round the grounds, as Nick said. Uh, so we want to talk through that. Uh, if you look at this chart, what you can see in blue is basically the take up of the NBN, so the percentage of households that are paying to use the NBN. And as that blue line's got bigger, the profits in the telco sector have got smaller because telcos effectively make a third of what they used to um, by reselling the NBN rather than having uh, the customer on their network. Um, this is significant. You may remember I've talked about this a few times being a once in a lifetime churn event, and it's what really has caused the sector to underperform so badly um, for so long. What's really significant now, as you can see, is 90% of the NBN is actually built by December, which scarily is only about five weeks away at Christmas. Um, so 90% of that is now, almost now built, and three quarters of households are actually on the NBN. So we've run through um, a pretty aggressive migration, a forced churn, once in a lifetime event that's had some pretty negative and serious consequences for the sector. If you put it in the context of Telstra, for example, um, nearly 40% of their EBITDA used to come from fixed line. Today it's about 10%. So that's the pain factor that's driven share prices lower. Uh, if we flick on to the next chart, uh, the chart on uh, your left hand side is NBN prices. What you can see is we started out being rational once upon a time. We were charging $107 for the average NBN plan. So that's what consumers, what households are paying. Uh, it's dropped dramatically all the way down to about $70 in December 2018. And what we have seen is that bouncing up a little bit over the last uh, nearly nearly 12 months effectively. So back to about $73 now, it was a bit higher earlier, but what we are seeing really is telco starting to be a little bit more rational uh, on pricing and work their way through some of this. Uh, the chart on your right hand side, or the second one, shows you uh, market share of the NBN only. So what you're seeing, the big blue line at the top is Telstra. When the NBN first started, Telstra was 55% of NBN net ads. They've dropped to about 42% now just bearing in mind that's NBN only. So as we flick on to the next chart, what you'll see is perversely the intention of the NBN was really to level the playing field and take away Telstra's market share. Uh, surprise, surprise, it's actually gone up. They're at 47% of the total market, so NBN plus legacy. Uh, so 47% now from 46% before the NBN came along. So Telstra's doing a great job of holding on to its subscribers in what's clearly a very competitive and very um, irrational market. One might sensibly argue that Telstra's got a view that the lifetime value of these customers is going to go up uh, over time and that the current economics are not going to stay. Um, if we flick on to the next slide, this is just mobile. What we've seen is a knock-on effect from uh, the NBN into mobile. Chart on the left-hand side is pricing. So we've been tracking uh, the buckets of uh, mobile plans basically for the last little while. And you can see that like the NBN plans, that's fallen aggressively over the last little while, from particularly from July 2017. Um, but right now you're starting to see things go up. So they've hit bottom also, like NBN plans, and are starting to go up. And also market share, again, um, the second chart, the blue line is Telstra. Guess what? Its market share has also gone up from 42 to 48%. Uh, Optus has lost 1% market share over that period and Vodafone has lost about 5% market share. So for all this noise and intense competition, Telstra has actually gone up in terms of market share. Uh, on the mobile pricing, what you've, uh, what you've seen is actually we're returning to more normalised levels. About 5% year-on-year uh, -year price declines is pretty standard. It got as high as nearly 80% year-on-year price declines uh, a while back. So you can see that's been really aggressive. Uh, in terms of competing to get customers to actually get nowhere is the whole point of these couple of slides. Everyone's beating each other up over price and actually Telstra, who's the most expensive one uh, and has the dominant network, has actually grown its market share over the last five years. Um, just another way of looking at this is Optus's charts. Optus is the one who's been the most aggressive in terms of pricing and trying to uh, take market share from Telstra and, and move the dial. What you can see from both of those charts, the one on the left-hand side uh, is mobile. The one on the right hand side is fixed line. And what you can see is their net ads year on year. You can see they're actually slowing. So in the last five years, Telstra's gone, uh, sorry, in the last five years, Optus has gone backwards in market share. In the last two years, they've been really, really aggressive on market share and price, sorry, really, really aggressive on pricing. And actually what's happened is they've gone backwards at a faster rate. So just shows that this is not necessarily a rational, sensible market, but we're at the end of it is the key thing that I want to draw your attention to. Um, the third point there, we heard from the Optus CEO, Alan Liu, uh, on their quarterly call on Friday, just about what's happening. And I just thought I'd point out what he said is, in recent times, 
all three mobile operators have raised prices and reduced subsidies in general terms. We expect this trend to continue. So it's got to be pretty close to the bottom. Um, just wrapping that up in terms of call to action, Telstra is our key pick, it remains our key pick, and I know it's gone nowhere for a while, um, but we do think that this is really a sector view. We think Telstra's got the best balance sheet, the best market share, the most market share, and that the sector um, is going to re-rate soon. You've got a couple of catalysts on the horizon. Um, Telstra are hosting an investor day on Wednesday, the 27th of November. That's not necessarily anything to get too excited about. They don't tend to um, jump up and down too much there, um, but it will be helpful. I think the key uh, two things you need to be aware of that the catalysts are this High Court ruling with the Vodafone TPG merger, which is due in February. I think it's a positive outcome for Telstra, perversely, whether it gets up or not, because either way, you're going to have a more rational mobile market. And then if we wind it back to the chart right at the start, we are nine-tenths of the way through the NBN rollout. So I think things definitely get better from here, and Telstra does remain our key pick.